Welcome to Street Talk. I am your host, Loretta Rose. Can you tell I am overflowing with joy and excitement? We have a very special guest here in the studio. And if you have never had a dose of laughter, that good medicine, on this show you will get it today. All I can say, he is an accomplished actor, comedian, and entertainer. Wow. Stay tuned. We're going to come back. It's Street Talk with Loretta Rose here on cable TV. so much for tuning in to today's show. We are having a great time here in the studio and also I will say Phoenix City has truly been blessed with our special guest. It is the one and only Palmer Williams Jr. Welcome to the show, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, <laughs> Sister Rose. Oh. Um, as I, of, of course, you would have some roses. Of course. Yes, yes, of yes. Course. But, uh, definitely, I have been very, very excited about being here. I mean, we did this show last year, yes. and uh, everything just gets better and better. So I'm excited about being here. She's so eloquently described me as being this person that they say <laughs> I am, but I, I'm start checking my resume. Who is she talking about? She's talking about me. Well, so I'm you are. very, very honored and very, very blessed to be here. You, you are. You are so generous. You are a lover of humanity as a whole. Most definitely. And it shows through your service and your communication. And when we're in break, you know, you were saying here in the Tri-City area, a little boy recognized you in McDonald's. Right. But you had enough kindness and patience in your heart to at least acknowledge that little boy, even oh. though when others probably did not recognize who you were. Right, right. Well, you know what it is? It's... Um I've been blessed to be able to have a platform to where I can do some good, mm -hmm. you know. And one other thing I, I've always noticed that I know what not to do when it comes to the, the general population, if you will. Uh, that sounds so political. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I would be someone, uh, I would be remiss not to acknowledge that, that young so-called fan or what mm -hmm. I call friends mm -hmm. uh, because I know what not to do. I've had a lot of experiences where I was on the other side of, you know, being a fan as opposed to someone that's uh, in front of the camera. And I've been treated, you know, less than godly. Yes. I guess it would be the most politically correct way to say that Great or spiritual way, way to say that. Mm -hmm. And I, I know how that made me feel. Yes. And I would never want to do that to anyone else. And then plus, I think it was just instilled in, in, and also in my DNA from my mother and father that I would never mistreat anyone or like look down upon them or treat them in any way less than what I would want to be treated or I'd want my children to be treated. So that mm -hmm. was, uh, it, uh, my management will tell you that sometimes I go out of my way to make sure I acknowledge people because I said, he's like, come on, man, we got, we got time. I said, yeah, but just, just give me, give me yeah. a second. And so just being able to acknowledge them because you never know. You never know. You know, that may be the person that will buy that next album or that That's next right. DVD. That's and right. you don't do it for the sake of, you know, making some sort of gain from it. But, right. you know, you just, if you're able to bless somebody, because I've had so many instances where people have said, look, had I not come to this show and you made me laugh like this, tonight was going to be the last night of my life. Wow. And that has happened to me up in New Jersey and in, uh, also in Connecticut Crazy. and in Detroit. You know, I can remember those three distinct times when someone told me something like that. And even in, in uh, New Jersey, one lady, she actually came with the rest of the ladies of the evening that were her co-workers. And they also brought their, um, I guess, their administrator. Uh, we know them as pimps, but um, <laughs> she actually said, I just wanted to hug you and hold you because this is the closest thing that I've had to God in a, quite some time. Wow. And so you never know yeah. when it becomes ministry because you're administering the yes. gospel of Jesus Christ, Ooh. even through laughter. Preach, 
Pastor Paul. No, no, don't put that on me. My my aunt tried to do that to me before she passed, and uh, wow. God bless her. But I, I love too hard, and I love wow. too long, and I can't take yeah. all of that hurt home. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I get so I had to like love wow. him from afar, and yeah. my altar is the stage. Ooh, wow, so, that yeah. is good. Yeah. And I will say, I have been one that have been uplifted and had a a broken heart but it was mended mm. through your ministry on stage as well. Well, I just want to be that uh, that healing balm in Gilead mm. that just happens to be a big old jaw. Wow. You know, wow. that, you know, instead of just getting a little bit, I want you to scoop out some comedy wow. and just get healed because, uh, you know, my mother's favorite song is like, you know, if I can help somebody as they travel along, then my living will not be in Praise vain. God. The brief version of it. So, because uh, I lost my mother at eight. And so, therefore, the dedication that I have for everything that I do is dedicated to her. And then I lost my father 22 years ago. So those were my two best friends. Wow. So that's why when I go out here with the fervor and the passion that I do things, it's for them. Praise God. Don't well, want to embarrass them. <laughs> you know? Well, before we let people know why you're here, I want to help those that are watching. Because some people are watching and they're like, I've seen him from somewhere. I've right. seen him. Help us to under help those that are watching to know um, you're on Tyler Perry's sitcom. Well, actually, I was going to tell him if you've been in your local post office and there's a picture right in the right hand corner, my manager has distributed that because he said I need more marketing. So I'm actually on the witness protection program. I'm not even supposed to be here. But if you look in your local post office, you may see my picture. But I uh, most wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I've done, I've done uh, Tyler Perry's House of Pain, mm -hmm. and that actually came out of me being at church doing liturgical dance. Wow. That's another whole story. So wow. you, that testimony in itself will, will have us both in here shouting. But I actually was dancing at church, and he was there, and I got an audition based on him seeing me there and calling my church to get my number. And six days later, I was shooting House of Pain, wow. and I didn't want to do the ministry at church. So that in itself is a mm -hmm. ministry. And I was only supposed to be on the show for six episodes. Mm -hmm. And then it ended up being about 48 episodes Great. from House of Pain. And then the spinoff with doing Love Thy Neighbor. Yes. And we did 126 episodes of that. And uh, it's just been a, a roller coaster mm -hmm. ride. And then doing The Marriage Counselor, uh, playing, you know, uh, uh, Floyd and... And growing weed in my my <laughs> kid's backyard. Not that I do that. Please, right. <laughs> when you see me out in a show, please stop offering me weed uh, because it's illegal in some states. But uh, that show, um, Laugh to Keep from Crying, um, I Don't Want to Do Wrong, uh, Medea's Big Happy Family, yes. um, The Have and the Have Nots, the play version. You know, so you know, wow. it's been it's Such been a, a good ride. It's been a good ride. And then also doing two shows of my own, you know, What a Man Wants, What a Woman Needs with the late great Bishop Eddie L. Long. And I did a show with him. And then Can a Woman Make a Man Lose His Mind was my first touring play. Wow. Yeah. Can yeah. a woman really make a, make a man, man lose his mind? Can the a woman is really? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. 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 Yeah, that, wow. that, that, that right there. Mm. Yeah, I think I was sharing with your daughter that um, I knew about veterinary sciences because I dated a veterinarian at one time. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is true. I know you're laughing and you're enjoying it as well. Um, but before I ask you about why you're here again, um, did you ever think you would be this funny? No. Someone had to tell me I was funny. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Someone had to tell me I was funny. And it was the, the late, great uh, Reverend David Payton. I was doing a show. I was actually an understudy and a background singer, and I sold merchandise, and I helped drive the truck. That's how I got my start in touring plays. And uh, from doing that, I was an understudy for all the male parts. And I was playing Mr. Suave, Debonair, Mr. Damien Marshall at first, and then... Um, another guy kind of swindled me out of the, the, the role by uh, going to the producer and telling him, I can do this and I can do this. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really, really low down. And he was my roommate on the road. And so from that was birthed another uh, particular role where I played uh, Reverend Jasper. And I had to be funny. And I took that role and I went at it so adamantly, and I guess from the anger and from it, it became a blessing because then 
I became almost like the star of the show due to that role. Not only was I opening the show as the MC, but I also played that role. And then the producer of the show and director and writer, he actually allowed me to do his part in the show where I had to preach in the second half of the show. So here it is now. When I thought it was a setback, it was a setup. Oh, yes. So I got pushed mm. out of the way and thinking, like, you know, I'm all upset and downtrodden and everything. But it's like, hey, wait a minute. Let me go and do this. I went to Goodwill out in, in Santa Monica, California, and actually got my first outfit, and it's just been etched in stone ever since wow. then. So that $8 outfit, <laughs> and mind you, it's wow. eight new beginnings. Oh, and yes. So that $8 outfit yes. caused me to have a career in this business. Look at God. Oh, my God. See, this is what's happening. And also, what you're seeing on the show, you will experience when he's entertaining or co-hosting. So yes. help everyone to know why you're here in Phoenix City. Well, I'm here because I came all the way down here to eat at Ed's, <laughs> actually. And uh, right now I'm fighting a food coma because I, ha I, am, I, am, I am chicken drunk. I'm trying to tell you right now. And it was baked chicken and I had one fried wing and the rice and the gravy. I'm good to be here. But no, actually I'm here for the sixth annual Mayor's Ball in Positively Phoenix, Alabama. Yeah. Yes. So I am very honored to actually, in the six years, I've actually been the host for three of those yeah. coming up this June 15th at 7 p.m. And I, I am honored. I am humbled. I am, I am gaining friends with, uh, yes. with, the, with the mayor and his real true boss, the first lady oh, yes. of, of, of the mayor of Positively oh, yes. Phoenix. Uh, yeah, Alabama. she's the glue to it. Oh, huh? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she's the only person that I've ever done an interview like I'm doing with you at gunpoint. It's amazing <laughs> that I'm not going to make any mistakes today because I don't want to get shot here in Phoenix City. But, no, uh, she's been such a sweetheart. And um, But she's about that business, and she's yes. about the business of helping these children mm -hmm. that otherwise wouldn't get this help at all exactly. to get it. Exactly. You know, I mean, how does someone feel when you've received an award or, or just received any kind of acknowledgement yeah. from a job well done. So here it is, you're earning a scholarship, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't even have to give it to you. Right. But by the grace of God, they have the ways and means to create a vehicle like this mayor's ball yes. in order to facilitate helping these children. And then what was crazy in another interview, the mayor actually disclosed all the percentages mm -hmm. of what they give away and how they give away, even with dual enrollment type of scholarships in order for some of these kids that as recently in, in Phoenix City at the high, high school, they actually had the dual enrollment and they received an associate's degree with a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. So starting school as a junior. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those, oh, yes. those uh, shortcuts and those push aheads and things like all that stuff will equate to someone getting a good head start. And then mind you, with a dual uh, enrollment and then an associate's degree, there's no student loans mm, on that. That's right. So now you got two wow. years to try to think about paying for it. Yes. Then you get a scholarship on top yes. of that, and you wonder why I'm here. <laughs> you know See, what I'm saying? And, because and I'm love. still, the, yes. the, the, the mayor still owes me for my, my daughter that just finished one year because we didn't apply. <laughs> but uh, she just finished her first year at FAM. So we're going to need some, some love offering, and I'm going to give my cash app number to you before we so leave. You know, and, and so you're a parent that and you're knows. laughing. I'm so serious. We need on three, we're going to take a sip of our water because okay. we said that. One, two, three. Yes. There it is. I'm with you. <laughs> and this is Look. water because we would not be able to finish this with anything else. I need to, um, I, I love Ed's. Oh, now, yeah. when you say chicken drunk. Oh, yeah. I I have oh, yeah. got to go get some of that chicken today. Oh, yeah. I had to start tapping my arm. I thought I was going to stroke out. I'm trying to tell you now. And my, um, because we can't run this interview too long. I'm sorry about that because my red velvet cake is in the car. So we don't want it to melt. So we're going oh, yeah. to wrap this up soon because we can't have red velvet all over the back carpet. And I must add, Ed is here <laughs> in Phoenix City. Yes, it also, is. Also, one thing about you, you are. You know, you need to be sponsored by Ed's. They need to underwrite your show. Thank you. Look at God. I Won't he do it? it? And then, yes. Come on, somebody. I receive it. I we should be smelling Thank uh, you. smothered pork chops right now. <laughs> I received that. <laughs> Thank you. I received that I with know you, that's brother. In Jesus' yes. name. Come on now. Now in Jesus' name and college grace. <laughs> hey. I'm sorry. Now, um, you 
also have a heart for Alabama because oh, you yeah. from Alabama. Oh yeah, born and raised uh, straight out of Camden. Not New Jersey, Camden, Alabama, <laughs> Wilcox County, population about 2,100 people, and that's including every dog, cat, <laughs> chicken, and cow Jesus. in the census <laughs> because we have to add them in in order to get funding for the, the school <laughs> and everything. But we, uh, we really have, uh, it, it's, it's so many people that have come from Camden that people don't even realize that they have been birthed out of that. Your, your governor of, of uh, Alabama, Ms. K. Uh, Ivy, Ivy uh -huh. born in Camden, Alabama. Really? Yes, I know you're proud. Um, <laughs> then you also have uh, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions, <laughs> born in Camden, Alabama. So if you go ahead to Wikipedia, you'll see both of their names <laughs> surrounding my name. So I'm in good company. <laughs> Amen. I'm yeah, keep the straight face. <laughs> that's, that, that's that gospel laugh. <laughs> Oh, Won't he do it? <laughs> yes. Uh, take another sip of our water. Okay, Come on, honey. somebody. <laughs> Woo. And Jesus. Trying to stay safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. Oh, my God. You're going to get drunk with laughter on today's show. We we're so. going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to find out what exactly is the mayor's ball. Yes. Phoenix City Mayor is an educational and charity ball. And many of you probably haven't been, and we don't want you to miss it because we are investing in our future. It's Street Talk with Loretta Rose. You're watching it here on cable TV with Palmer. And this is when we cut the fan on in between takes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Loretta Rose, the host of Street Talk. I'm inviting you to tune in with me every Tuesday evening at 7.30 here on CTV Bean. To keep up with what's happening in your community, please follow me on social media. You can catch me on Facebook at Street Talk with Loretta Rose and you can see things that have been happening in your community. Also, if you would like to share your story, you can contact me personally at Loretta Rose 94 at gmail.com. The Streets Talk and I'm your host with the most. Welcome back to Street Talk. It is our celebrity edition, and I am so excited to share this with you. Yes, we're talking about Palmer William Jr., mm. celebrity entertainer, and we're talking about the 2019 Mayor's Ball, which is Phoenix City's Mayor's Ball, and is education and charity. And yes. we want you to be able to come and support it. So. Palmer, it's yes. probably people that have never been and they're wanting to know what is the mayor's ball is They've all about. They've never been in the mayor's ball? So you've missed me for three years coming up. That is unfortunate. No, we we <laughs> got to get you out of there. I mean, this is an, uh, a charity ball that a lot of different organizations, they either come individually or they buy an, a complete table. And the tickets are $85 a piece. And what they do is that they don't understand that they're contributing to the life and the future of a potential college student. Yes. And w what is the beautiful part about all of this is that when I was explaining it to the mayor of Positively Phoenix, Alabama, Phoenix City, Alabama, I was saying that, you know, you're sending these children out, and I don't even think that you realize that they'll eventually come home and, and you go out into the vineyard and you learn all the things you need to learn and then you'll come back into the storehouse. Not necessarily just the money, but with the knowledge in order to create uh, hope and to create opportunities and to create uh, growth in your city. So he doesn't even realize the magnitude. He, he and his wife don't realize the magnitude in which what you may think is a thousand dollars for this kid or maybe five hundred dollars for this kid and then that could mean so much to that child yes. that it'll give you an incentive to go out there and make good on that money and good on that mm -hmm. uh, investment and then we'll have that ROI, that return on that investment yes. when that child comes back and maybe even settles in Phoenix City. Maybe create something to where a new industry is in Phoenix exactly. City. Maybe create something to where he can go up and clean up a little area that he may have come from that may be a, uh, slightly impoverished or uh, under a lot of uh, serious uh, crime and, and corruption or something like that. 
or just underprivileged children that can see somebody that can offer hope by example. Because right. a lot of times children can only become what they, what they see. So if they're giving them something negative, that'd be one thing, and that's usually where they tend to go. Exactly. But if you can give something positive, you know, even with law enforcement and things like that, when they can see someone of their own hue that's actually walking the streets and doing something that to make sure that you administer the law. So those, those are things that um, I think they don't even realize what a blessing that the mayor's ball is and is going to continue to be. You know, we, we were joking around at lunch at Ed's, her new endorser. Yes. <clears throat> so um, what we were yes. talking about is that next year will be their seventh year. And, you know, and, and we always say, like, you know, seven is, is the year of completion. completion. No, no. What we're changing that to is that the seventh year will be, we'll be completely committed mm. to taking this on to the next level. Yes. Because then the eighth year is new beginnings. So I'm expecting something big wow. starting this year. Yes. You know, from the, the six of love yes. and compassion and things like that. So we're just trying to build on wow. something that has already been originally created by the mayor and his wife. Yes. And we want to make sure that even like the gentleman from Morehouse yes. that just blessed yes. 396 yes. men from, from Morehouse College yes. to uh, erase their student loans. Exactly. Well, we're trying to catch it on the front end, yes. you know, and make sure that, you know, those scholarships and that money to support these children to study exactly. and not have to worry about the challenges and the restrictions of school because they have to worry about the money. And the students really appreciate it because oh, yeah. I had an opportunity to interview some last year at the ball that were recipients right. previously, and they shared how it was a blessing for them. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's a blessing for families, for parents as well, too. First generation uh, uh, children that are going to college from an entire family. And that has happened because of things like this ball. Yeah. You know, and, and right in positively Phoenix City, yes. Alabama. You know, a lot of people want to like, tear it down and say that it's not this and, and that it's only bad that comes from there. You know, you're right next to Columbus, yes. Georgia. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's basically like your sister, sister city. Mm -hmm. So would you abandon your sister? Would you just do your sister wrong? No. So that's no. why the mayors of both cities have Beautiful. joined forces Thanks. to create an atmosphere in this tri-city area that is going to basically bring these children up with the hope and the, uh, the aspirations to go out into the field, yeah. learn everything with the greatest uh, 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 fervor and energy that they can muster up, and come back home and show just how much they appreciate it by taking care of the people that took care of them first. Yes. Now, we're not doing it just because, oh, we know we're going to get this back. Just kind of like when you do your tithes and your offering, <laughs> and you do a little love offering on the side for pastor. You know, you don't do that for the sake that you're going to get right. something in return. You do it because it's your reasonable service. Yes. And so that's what the, the, the mayor and his wife are doing right now. It's just a reasonable service, and God has blessed them to be at a platform to where they can even enlarge their territory yes. by going forth and getting these children out there to where they'll have some hope and they'll have a future, and they won't be enslaved by debt when Ooh, they leave school. That is a blessing right Because that is nothing right but the devil to be yes. enslaved to debt. That is a new form of slavery called mm. debt. Ooh, that's and so because you get out of school, then you have to still stay at mama or big yes. mama's, and you can't afford your own house, you can't afford your own car, and then you get a salary from some job that you cannot pay the insurance on possibly. Mm -hmm. And so how are you going to qualify for a house? Because your debt to income ratio yes, is like this. Exactly. So you can't qualify for a home to get out of mama's house. Then that's tension right there because yeah. you're like, look, you know, you're about 27 years old now. It's about time for you to move, you know, because me and daddy want to walk yeah. around the house in our drawers. But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's another whole thing. We're going to stay holy. But no, it, you know, empty nesters. You know, but I, it's, but you've got to right. get to a point yeah, exactly. where we, we cannot be yeah. enslaved to credit mm. cards and the, a low credit credit scores and not owning mm -hmm. land. There's so much more wow. to it, you know, and all of that starts with it. I'm telling you, you don't realize how much you're blessing these kids by doing this first. Mm -hmm. You're planting a seed planting for a an seed. amazing harvest that's going to come when they get their degrees. Now, when, when you come to the mayor's ball, let them know what's happening this year because every year is phenomenal. And I must add with 
Mayor Eddie Lowe mm -hmm. and First Lady Deborah mm -hmm. Lowe. Mm -hmm. They are the sweetest. And I was not paid to say this. Yeah, well, they are. They are. <laughs> um, no, no, they, they treated me to Ed, so I'm all right. No, 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 I've, I've just enjoyed that relationship. And that's why we try to bring something different, something bigger and better mm -hmm. each year. And we try to top... You know, the last time, and this year, we're bringing a Grammy-nominated artist yes. to be our uh, guest speaker, as well as blessing us with some music. And that's one and the only Miss Angie Stone. Woof! Miss wow. Angie Stone is Angie actually Stone, and she's even I working on a new album right now. So she's taking time off to do this because she's that concerned mm -hmm. with the children, because she's a big activist and philanthropist when it comes to. Uh, children, you know, doing better and, and, and instilling and investing yes. in their futures. So she's taking time out to make sure she comes down and does her thing. And we have a live band yes. that's going to be there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, my buddy, Mr. John Bill and the Bill Street Collective, they're coming down. And I might even grab the microphone and beatbox. I don't even know. <laughs> so we You got never know what to on. expect with you because last I never know <laughs> what to expect with me. And you know. your co-host this year again. Miss, the one, the only, the beautiful Miss Teresa Whitaker. She's going to be doing that. And we have so much fun just doing that together. Yes. And, and, and it, it's a good it's a good marriage of, of talents, you know, from her doing her TV thing, mm -hmm. you know, from a journalistic aspect and me coming from TV from a, a entertainment mm -hmm. and, and, and craziness and comedic. Side. <laughs> yeah, comedic side as well. So it's a uh, it's a beautiful mix. Yeah, it's uh it's your Dean Martin and and uh, Jerry Lewis and and you know just yes. it's like and not necessarily Abbott and Costello, but you know. Kind of sorta, of, but uh, you can guess which one I am. But she's like, she does the the the, the straight lace thing, but she'll slick, you know, stick one in there as far as the comedy too. But yes. we just have a good time, and and she's she's such a professional. She's the ultimate professional, so and it's so easy to work with. Her. And you too. I and so it. they um, will be co-hosting again. So we're gonna have Angie Stone. Yes. The food is always phenomenal. Most definitely. Full course. Yes. All the way. Please do not bring foil. <laughs> We're not doing that this year. <laughs> and don't bring any to-go containers, please. It's not that kind of event. Thank you. It is top-notch, yes. class, it's formal, yes. and it is beautiful. Last year, it was a record-breaking attendance. Yes, we sold out last year. That's beautiful. Yeah, so we're, we're looking to do that because we want to get to the point where we outgrow every venue around here. Because it'll literally, only, that's it'll, what you all have been doing. It'll only bless the children just that much mm. more, and then you're able to bless even more. Yes, you're enlarging the territory exactly. once again. So that is the goal, and I know that's the heart of uh, the positively Phoenix City Mayor and First Lady yes. to do that. And it's it's a uh, like I said, I. I I, I look forward to this every year because I know I'm going to be a part of it as long as they don't fire me. And uh, <laughs> That's not I just, happening. I, I really, really do enjoy doing this. So this should be an annual event. Yeah. And then, you know, you know your show is only going to get bigger and bigger because each year you're going to get a new sponsor. Okay. You know, on I top of the it. first one, Ed's. Yes, Ed's. Thank uh, you. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to... Uh, Ooh, the Lord is good. Again. Won't he do it? Yes. I mean, I, I feel a Sonova spirit up in here. <laughs> oh, my God. Ed! Hey. Affleck. Come on, somebody. I feel an Affleck spirit in here oh. underwriting it. The show going to bring in so much money, they're going to get a whole new studio. Oh, Come on, Lord. somebody. They got to build the Rose Wing. Oh, Come on, somebody. I receive it, Lord. You, I'm... Come on, somebody. And I just want 10% tithe <laughs> yes. off of this show yes. because I put yes. it in the atmosphere. Yes. Ain't that something? How you going to just put something out there and want something in return? Ain't that something? That's all right. But uh -oh. you know, if you sow, <laughs> you will reap. reap. Yes. That's right. That's Come on, right. Somebody. See, this is what's happening. I'm going to put $8 on this show today. <laughs> I received, I, I'm, I'm walking in a new beginning. I know, that's with right. With positively Phoenix City. Come on, somebody. All right. Exactly. Now, see, I, what I love about you, Palmer, is that no people No one has can... ever said my name so eloquently. Oh. oh. <laughs> and she put the L in there because usually it's Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you, you are so relatable, and that's what I love about you. There are some young people probably watching now mm -hmm. because when the shows go online, you know, it's global then. Okay. And I want them to be inspired by who you are because you weren't always right here 
but there was a starting point. Most definitely. I want, and, and you have, I read up on some of your bio, mm -hmm. you have a passion, and it haven't just started three years ago mm -hmm. or six years ago mm -hmm. for youth and young adults. Most definitely. You've, always, you've had that for a very long time. Well, first of all, I have some youth and young adults you know, called children. So that that was like that's my first charity. It, it, I don't know if it was a charity because uh, those some expensive little folks. But anyway, oh, I'm trying yeah. to get them to fast, but they won't do it uh, just to save on groceries. But um, they're just not as saved as I thought they would be. But the, what what has happened? Um, a lot of people don't realize that I came from this dirt road, which is still a dirt road in Alabama right now, where my father's home is still there. And uh, I came from very humble beginnings in, in Prairie, Alabama. I thought we were rich because my father was my first principal and my mother was my first grade teacher. Lost my mother when I was eight years old, so I was like wandering around. I was lost. I was mad at God and the whole nine. And my father um, let me live with my aunt, and she helped nurture me and got me back to Christ in that aspect for losing my my. My, my umbilical cord that's never cut. And so here it was now after all that was said and done, then I go off and I go to college and uh, I have a, a child my first year. I'm 19 years old and I have a baby girl. She helped save my life because now I had to become a man overnight. And so now, as of this past Saturday, my daughter even, I'm not supposed to tell her business, but she actually had her boyfriend to come and ask for her hand in marriage just this past Saturday. So now i got to plan a wedding. So that's another old story. So we'll be putting the cash app out there again. So then I, after all of this, after having that baby to save my life, and I graduate from college, I'm kind of like just wandering in the wilderness, and I eventually get into a play, A Good Man's Hard to Find. And then I end up singing background for Monica. I sang background for Keith Sweat for three and a half years, LSG album, I sang on that and did all those sort of things. And then my father, before he passed away, he said, when are you going to do something that's going to elevate Christ, make money for you, and stop making everybody else rich? And six months later, he passed away. Mm -hmm. So I had another charge right there. And then after getting married and been married now for going on 22 years and having my children and everything, before that all happened, I was at a place where I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was in the middle of my marriage. I was depressed and everything. I wanted to have another child, our final baby and everything. And I didn't know where I was going. And then I was asked to do liturgical dance at the church. And I didn't want to do it because I had been fired from a volunteer ministry. You know, it takes a special person to get fired from, from a, a volunteer, volunteer <laughs> ministry. And I didn't even do anything. It was just wow. somebody else that wanted the job worse than I did. Two weeks later, they fired those people and brought me back in. And I did this dance I didn't want to do. And I was upset. And I said, I don't want to do this dance. They're going to laugh. Laugh at me because I'm not that type of dancer. So for three weeks, I trained and trained and trained. I was disgruntled. I was complaining. I was like, Lord, well, I got to spend all this diesel money. It's $4.98 a gallon. I'm driving 53 miles one way and back. And, it's, and I felt like God was up on yes. his breath saying, like, if you don't shut up and just wait for a second, you are two minutes away from the promise. And so I went ahead and I still did that dance. And after I finished doing that dance, Tyler Perry's people actually called the church. And the only person that had my cell phone number is the one who answered the phone. And she actually called back and said, like, look, you have two audition times, 11 or 1, which one do you want? At 10, 15 a.m., I was in the parking lot crying, snotting, and praying. Like, Lord, if you make me a good steward over this man's stuff, I know you're going to make me Lord over my own. A 15-minute in, uh, um, interview turned into two hours. That night, at 8, 15 that night, I got a phone call that said, we want you to be on House of Pain. Ten minutes later, boom, six scripts were on my front door because they hand-delivered them. Mm -hmm. And so then they go around six days later, and I'm shooting House of Pain. It was only supposed to be six episodes. Mm -hmm. But I ended up doing 42 episodes, I believe it was. Ooh. And then went on to a spinoff and did the whole show with uh, uh, Love Thy Neighbor, mm -hmm. not to mention six different stage plays in that, that period of time. I didn't want to do the dance. I didn't want to do that dance. I thought I was going to embarrass myself, and I didn't want to do this. And then God yet was speaking to me and saying, this is what you're going to do. And by doing that, I grew not weary in my well-doing for in due season. You too shall reap if you faint not. And that's what I had to do because you don't think it can happen for you. But if it can happen for me from where I come from, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you'll do bigger and better things wow. if you just have the faith. Everything the faith, was tied into that obedience. Was, Everything was obedient. tied into that dance. Yeah, obedience wow. is better than sacrifice. Wow, 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 wow. I was worried about gas money. Wow. I still got that truck. Wow. And not only that, what was even crazy about that, uh, the late Bishop Long actually uh, gave wow. me a love offering to help me put the down payment on that truck because of the fact of the ministry that I did at the, at the church. 
So you are blessing me. And see, this mm -hmm. is what this is what happened. He got this me. This is why I stopped wearing eyelashes because I ain't trying. <laughs> I ain't trying to lose my eyelashes and everything. And those are yours. That's exactly. The I don't have all eyelashes. Well, er, they're everybody that has them, they're theirs because they got the receipt for them. But I'm just saying, yours are naturally yours. Won't he do it? Oh, my goodness. Won't he grow them? Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. We're going to come back and we'll start closing out the show. And we're going to let you know how you can get tickets for this awesome There Has Not Been One Like It Here in this Tri-City area. It's Street Talk with Loretta Rose here on cable TV. We are with the Palmer Williams Jr. And now to our sponsors, Ed's. <laughs> hey folks, I'm Bear O'Brien. And over the last 40 years, I've been able to share my mornings with you on radio. And I've also been able to share my inspirational message every morning. It's a chance for me to share my faith with you. Now we're bringing it to TV, thanks to CTV Beam. You can catch us every Monday through Friday morning at 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., the inspiration of the morning. I'm so glad to share it with you. So please be watching every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. I love you. God bless you. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Um, we are about to get ready to bring the show to a close. Again, we want to thank our guest, Palmer William, Jr., you have just been so, so much of a blessing. I tell you, you know, I'm going to need you for my publicist. To serve <gasps> this. You're just so full of compliments. And I just, I'm trying not to it's blush. True. I was light skinned when I came in, but now I'm <laughs> blushing so that my whole hue has changed. But you, I, I appreciate you joy, for, for letting me be here. You really, really are. You have just, for me personally, it has just been a liberating show for well, me. Thank you. I will say that. Thank you. And I guess when you're around people that flow in their gifts and their talents and they know they're in their purpose, mm -hmm. it it just it's a blessing to everyone that's in your midst. And I'm glad you said purpose, because a lot of people they say like, you know, you're 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 doing your destiny. Destiny, the root word destiny is is the root word of destination. So that means that you've already gotten to the end. So your purpose is what you're supposed to live until you get to the end of your destiny. You understand what I mean? So I think people kind of misuse that word a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the same time, you know, you, finding your purpose is usually the most difficult thing in the world. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that you have a passion for, and like I explained to someone before, the root words for passion are love and pain. So why do you think they call what Jesus did the passion of the Christ? Because he loved us so much that he was willing to go through all that pain to show his love for us. And yet, that's why we call it the passion. You're a teacher. Do you hear that? I mean, <laughs> you, see, you have taught so much just by being in my the studio My father was today. my first principal and my oh. mother was my first grade teacher and librarian. Yeah, and crazy enough, I married a teacher, knowing their salaries and all that. I'm so serious. You have, because you have that teacher I married her because she was cute and she had a good credit score. And that's, <laughs> that 740 credit score was very attractive. So, yeah, so we're wow. 22 years in this July. So, yeah, that Talking was. Talking about marriage, it yes. brings out the best in you. Now that's what I you. heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> I, I'm still waiting. But no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We've we've uh, produced some some beautiful children, and uh, we've done some good work uh, with them. And uh, she's a God fearing woman, and she kind of reels me in sometimes yeah. when I'm acting the fool. So uh, I'm sure it I takes know. a lot with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? It was so crazy. A lot of people don't realize that with with people that are maybe comedically minded, or that's what their livelihood is. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pain behind that, too. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, like I said about my mom, you know, you know, mm -hmm. having to leave early and my father leaving, you know, the year before I got married and things like that and having lost like that. And uh, it, there's a lot of pain that's back there, and sometimes you have to mask it or hide it. But I've noticed that in order for me to heal, I have to make people laugh. Yeah. So that's actually my drug. Wow. That's the drug of my choice. Mm -hmm. That's the drug that I use in order to mm -hmm. heal myself. Because even Kevin Hart had an uh, album, or not album, dating myself. He even showed where he said, Laugh at My Pain was the title of one of his shows. Wow. So there's a lot of pain behind that laughter. Mm -hmm. But they said laughter is like good medicine. Wow. It's good for the soul. Wow. So that's why me administering the anointed comedy, 
you know, as opposed to necessarily being a pastor, but I want to be no, no, known as sort of like a pastor of the comedic stage, so to speak, wow. because God has blessed me to have a platform, and I haven't shot a TV show in five years, but yet people still recognize because it's, you know, in, uh, keep going in circulation on BET. Wow. Thank you, BET. Yes, and OWN. Thank you, and OWN. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. I, I'm a, I'm a, I know you have to call Because I out. watch you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> One of the biggest blessings I ever received, and somebody is so generous and just just so, so humble at the same time. I'm in Chicago, Illinois, and there's a, a restaurant, and Miss Oprah Winfrey herself actually bought the whole restaurant out that night and served all 75 of us that were in the crew, truck drivers, bus drivers, the cast, band, everybody, even wardrobe, everything, that one night. So I'm thinking, like, this woman's a billionaire. And I'm saying, she's sitting up here, and she just did this. Oh, so mind you, I'm coming in. She's handing me a flute of champagne saying, congratulations, and called me by name. Okay, mm -hmm. and if that wasn't enough, I'm sitting upstairs in the restaurant, we sit up there, all of a sudden this big old, I smelled the chicken before it got to me, and this big old plate, and she bumped into me, and it was Oprah Winfrey serving me chicken. Wow. If this billionaire yes. can be that humble, yes. who am I? Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And to top all of that off, and I, I'm telling my business a little bit, but I was on a phone call, and all the cast members were on a phone call, and everybody in the whole camp was getting these bonuses. $2,000, $3,000 a piece. And there's a lot of people that work at Tyler Perry Studios. So here it is, this phone call. I'm on a conference call. Oprah Winfrey has all of the cast members and, and Mr. Tyler Perry as well on there. And she blessed all seven of us with $25,000 a piece. God, God. Over the phone. Oh, my God. And she still sends me a gift on my birthday oh, and at Christmas. And I haven't God. shot a show in five years. Wow. I have this little blanket that people don't understand. Like, don't let that blanket hit the floor because they don't know how much it costs. Much, yeah. Because, of course, me and my nosy wife, we said it and we researched it online <laughs> to see how much it's like. This costs what? Oh, we can't put this out for company. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the only one lay on this. I earned this blanket. And it's by paper thin as these cards right wow. here. But that thing, I don't know, it has an anointing for warmth or something. <laughs> and then she sent me a candle wow. that was like 200 something dollars. Like, Oprah Winfrey got some serious class, and it's just, yeah. you couldn't help but go in and yeah. just do your best. Wow. As if you're I supposed to do that, that anyway. Yeah. But then it's just to know that you're appreciated. But she care, she she see your value, your worth, and she appreciate you. Oh, yeah. And again, like you said, she didn't have to do that. And when it's unexpected, it's even wow. more. That is so I wish she would ask me to do something. I'll take out trash for Oprah Winfrey. I know, you understand that's right. what I'm saying. Now, see, you, know, see, you making me want to Can you say my name so I can feel like like you felt with Oprah? Can, Loretta Rose is my name, Mr. Williams. Can As you say if my name? I've been sitting here for 45 minutes <laughs> like I don't know her name now. Y'all give it up, Kanisha Flowers. <laughs> so we'll make sure that Sister Sister Oprah, the Mother Oprah, will know about, about Laquita Johnson, right here. I'll okay, take it. on on on, he on, the, about me? on the Rose Show. <laughs> the Rose Show. I'm telling you, yeah. I mean, I just expect bigger and bigger blessings to come your way, and oh, whatever it is that that was taken away from you yeah. from the canker worm, it would definitely be restored. Ooh, Lord, Jesus, definitely be restored. That. And it won't even. And, and what's going to surprise you? It's not even going to be from this show. And I don't know why God put that on my heart. But. I received it. So I'll, I'll expect to see your testimony by next year. Ooh, Lord. Right. Oh, wow. I received that. And so this is what. Especially with that endorsement from Ann. Yes. Oh, my God. I have been so then blessed. Then it's going to be St. John Suits oh, next. Oh, Lord. See, I look like I touched her spirit right there. <laughs> yes, he did. She know about that St. John. Yes, he did. You because can tell. let me tell you, last year at the 2018 Phoenix City's Mayor's Ball, this man was so clean, he could cut the carpet. He smelled so good. I went home with my dress, my well, that was, gown. That was, that was bath day. Mm, yeah. <laughs> my gown had his cologne on, on it. And I said, Lord, I wish yeah. my money could buy that. You, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I didn't you know? want to take it to the cleaners. I'm going to tell you this. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> Coming home with a cologne. He just on. hugged me, Miss Williams. She's trying to get me killed on TV. <laughs> I was like, well, hey, your man outside like this. What a, what a good smelling dude that. Walking back and forth like this. Well, look, I went home, I told my husband, I said, oh, he's 
smell so good. Mm -hmm. What okay. was he wearing? I said, I don't know. I wish my money could buy it. Or whatever. <laughs> you know, you'd be surprised. I, I am the, uh, the, the black Hebrew. I'll put it like that. I can find some deals. So tell me, give me a call. So let, let's let everyone know, uh, how much are the tickets? The tickets are $85. $85. And that is well well worth well it. Because you it. think about it, if you just have the two of us, like we go in and get something to eat mm -hmm. and you know, have something of a nice, elegant dinner or something like that, it's going to cost you upwards of $150. So basically, this is almost like a halfway. It's like going Dutch. You know, so, yeah. you know, but the thing is, all of the proceeds go towards the kids. Towards the kids. So, exactly. I mean, you know, you have to have some sort of earnings or some sort of income in order to facilitate, you know, the ministry. Exactly. You know, because ministry is not cheap. Yes, you know, and this exactly. is a ministry. Exactly. You know, you may not want to say it's a ministry for the second of five or one or whatever, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, it's from the heart. Exactly. And you have to be able to facilitate, you know, uh, uh, faith without works is That's dead. So right. we got to work in right. order to facilitate what we have faith that God is going to bless us with. Right. But we have to still have something to offer. That's right. You know, how am I going to just go and just keep giving you, keep giving you, you don't give me anything oh, back in, wow. in, in, in return, yeah. even though he only asked for your obedience and, and, and your praise. Yes. That's wow. the simple thing that you can wow. do for somebody that's blessed you for the air that you breathe yeah. right now. Wow. Wow. So when you come, you're going to get a nice meal. You're going to have dessert as well. You're going to get yes. live entertainment. Yes. You're going to have Palmer Williams Jr. and our very own Teresa Whitaker. And a Grammy-nominated yes. artist. Angie Stones. Where oh, can you get that for $85? You, you can't even go to a concert for That's $85 like that. That's two weeks like of that. Starbucks for you. <laughs> Cause you know Starbucks by twenty five dollars a cup. Uh -huh. So yeah, and then and why do people walk around with the Starbucks cup like this? Like I got a trophy. <laughs> you know, it just shows that I just spent seven dollars on a cup of coffee <laughs> when I can just get a Keurig after about ten times okay. and have the same amount. Cause Starbucks serves the little cups. I'm sorry, that's our next endorser, Starbucks. <laughs> Yes. Brought to you by Ed's and Starbucks. Because right. you're going to need Starbucks after eating Ed's. <laughs> so, you, um, he just so, <laughs> oh my God, he's such a That's blessing. why we got to take a sip of drink. Yes, okay. So, we're going to conclude this show because I got to go and get into rush hour traffic, which I don't understand why they call it rush hour because you sit still. <laughs> But thank you so much for having me on your show once Absolutely. again. Absolutely. We got to make this an annual event. Yes, sir. So if you're scheduled, then that means that means that they hired me again. So yes. we're going to make sure of that. First lady has given that thumbs up. Like, okay. yes. Good. This Good. is this is a must have. Well, I'm going to hold you to it. So again, mm -hmm. let me let you know where you can get tickets. You can get them from any committee member. That includes first lady, Deborah Lowe as well. I'm pretty sure Mayor Lowe probably have some with him at look time. Up, look for that white stinking Lincoln. <laughs> also, he might be leaning in like this a little bit. <laughs> Event Bright, yes. East Alabama Chamber of Commerce, Mel and Abe Barber Shop, which is in South Phoenix City off Seal Road. That's like our neighborhood barber shop. Okay. That's what, that's what us is. That's what us is. Okay, all right. <laughs> yes. So you can get tickets from them, um, $85. Just like I said, you can't even go to a, you go to a concert and you're going to spend more than that. Yes. But you're going to, it's like you're going to a concert, you're going to have live entertainment, you're going to have a meal, you're going to be entertained. It is wonderful. And then it's for a good cause. You're getting all that and then being a blessing to some kid that otherwise may not even be able to make it to college. Exactly. You know? Wow. And I, and I know this may sound crazy, but I know somebody in law enforcement can really, really back me up on this. It's like, for all you folks out there, this is a diverse crowd. This is not only yes. an, an urban crowd. It's, I think that's a political right way of saying that. But what has to happen is that if you don't want people to break into your house later on mm -hmm. and they don't have any ways and means of income and stuff like that, this is a good way to pay forward. Yes. This is the best security in the world is yes. making sure that everybody has something to do yes. and everybody has a job. Yes. I'll leave you with that. Oh, wow. All right. I mean, hint. well said. Come to the mayor's ball. And if you can't come, send your check. <laughs> Bless yes. your heart and all your parts. <laughs> Trying to tell you, if you want your house not broke into. Not that I'm going to do it. I'm just saying. Yes.
And you're you're right. Take another sip you're of are my absolutely drink. right about that. And then last year, the Columbus mayor was there in support of the Phoenix City mayor's And we'll be there again. And this we'll be year. there again. That's that Tri Cities working yes, together. Yes, exactly. On. And just like you said, it's very diverse, and I love it because. People come from everywhere, not even, you don't even have to be living here in the city. Mm -hmm. you, you can be living, you know, in a whole nother city. Right. But I saw so many people and I said, God, this is amazing. Well, all of Russell County. And since it's yeah. the Tri-Cities, that's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay. <laughs> hey. Why do we scream when we feel it too? <laughs> hey, thank you. Well, this Ooh. has been well, Which one is, is uh, Positively Phoenix City? <laughs> That's the Holy Ghost, because the spirit, <laughs> the spirit of love is right over there in Positively Phoenix City. Yes, it is. Changing the narrative. What? I just thank you so much again. Oh, thank you. Thank you for just stopping by here in Phoenix City. Thank you for promoting um, this wonderful occasion. Um, thank you my for pleasure. your heart. You're oh, so you. genuine. Oh, I know one more endorsement you have to get <laughs> okay. from an air conditioning company. <laughs> It's hot as East Hell up in here. <laughs> I'm going to get resaved. <laughs> I gotta get a touch up. Cause if it's any hotter than here down there, I can't go. Okay, okay. Look, all my water's gone. I'm about to do this. <laughs> Thank you. So you know, you got to come. This is cool. It is so well worth it. I have just been blessed. And I'm being calm blessed. here. You being calm. Yeah, because you know you dressed all professional. I had to yeah, dress you're up. The one. I had to look, look, we had, we had, look at that. And I got a hint of blue in it with your navy skirt. Look at that. I got on blue socks. <laughs> I didn't mean to put on blue socks. So can, yeah, we say, then, can we say can we say great minds were thinking alike? There it is. There it is. Fashionista over here. Oh. Mr. GQ. What? Well, there it is. <laughs> Come see us at the mayor's ball. So I'm going to let you close out the show because um, you have just blessed us so much. And I know, again, young people are dear to your heart. And you understand the, the mission behind this big event, what has taken place. You, you have caught the vision before you got here. <laughs> and so I just want you to speak from your heart to those that are watching. And again, just you've really demonstrated it well to help young people to see where they are and the possibility of where they can be. Okay. But I'm going to let you close out. And This is what I want you to do. There's a lot of you that are being distracted, like with video games, with the Internet, with Instagram, and all sorts of things. The Internet is to be used as its purpose was to be, and that's for the information highway. Don't find yourself using it as just a medium for entertainment purposes. Because back in my day, we had encyclopedias. Y'all have Google. But it's a wealth of information that you need to use in a positive light. So if you want to change everything that's happening to us right now, those of you, if you want to change the the, the pulling over from the police and the, the abuse or, or things like that of that nature, we have to change the narrative. And by doing that, going to school, doing what it is that you're supposed to do and not breaking a rule or a law or something like that, and know that when someone apprehends you or pulls you away from your purpose, then they're stealing from you. If you've had anything stolen from you, you know how bad that made you feel. So now, Stop letting them steal your attention. Stop letting them steal your education. And definitely don't let them snuff or steal your life. Because sometimes it's not law enforcement that's taking the life out of you. It's someone that you think is a friend or a family member. So don't blame it all on one particular organization. Take responsibility. Have accountability for your own actions. And then you can change the narrative of what people think you are or what you are, but you got to remember whose you are. And once you get that straight, everything will work itself out and everybody will want to be like you. Wow. Ooh, wait, that is so good. God bless you. God bless you. I love you, brother. I appreciate you. Oh, Thank God you, bless you. We want to give a shout out to his manager, Richard. Mr. Richard Jordan. We know him as Rich, yes. you know, and uh, make sure that you uh, contact him so you can get my cash app information. <laughs> And thank you, First Lady. Y'all laughing. I'm so serious. <laughs> thank you, First Lady. I'm affording to the mayor, but I'm going to have to take a 10% off top of it. Because you know for gas money, you know, I should give him 8%. Oh, 
Instead of 10%. No. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard. He is here in the studio as well. Thank you, Mayor Eddie Lowe and First Lady Deborah Lowe. Thank you all so much for the great work that you're doing. Yes. Thank you all for tuning in and thank you to Keep our Keep supporting this woman guests. so you can see her grow right before your very oh, eyes. God. All right. Make we're looking cry. for we're f looking for the love wing. We're gonna call it love wood. Rosewood, I'm sorry, I gave her last name of love now because she's showing so much love. Oh, but this God. is going to be Rosewood Wing of this very own uh, TV station right here. Thank you. We're claiming it. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching Street Talk. You've been watching it here on cable TV.